In this video we're going to look at the basic ideas behind uh, welfare analysis and uh, the compensation criterion. And the basic issue that um, you want to think about in, in welfare analysis is comparing two allocations. Um, what do we do if we move um, goods from one person to another person? Uh, how does that, um, can we judge whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. So we'll start with a very simple example um, where we've got uh, two individuals A and B and they're, they've got uh, different bundles of goods Q1 and Q2 and uh, we're gonna you can measure uh, individuals A's consumption as a vector from the origin uh, and individual A gets Q1A and uh, Q2A um, and individual B gets um, Q1B and Q2B. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create an Edgeworth box by simply rotating uh, uh, Q uh, or individual B's um, uh, allocation around so that now we have a, a box that has the size Q1A plus Q2 Q1B and uh, with uh, uh, that green and red um, dot in the middle indicating the allocation for both individuals over that total um, uh, quantity of goods. Um, the question in welfare analysis then is how can we compare that to some other point? Let's say the blue dot over there to the right. Uh, is that better? Is that worse? Is there any way that we can um, uh, rank those two allocations? And this is what they do in figure 3.1 in Just Hewitts and Smiths. So um, we have a uh, total um, uh, an Edgeworth box. Uh, we're looking at a point B and saying, okay, how, what if we move to some other points? So of course the points D, A, and E are easily ranked. If we moved from B to E, uh, individual A would be better off. Uh, they're moving on to a higher indifference curve, uh, while individual B has not, his uh, utility has not changed. Simply rotated around from the point B on their, that indifference curve to the point E on that indifference curve. If instead we move to the point D, then uh, individual B is better off and individual A's utility has not changed. And of course, if we move to the point A, both uh, individuals A and B uh, can be better off. So the points D, A, and E are easily comparable to point B. They're all uh, a Pareto improvement relative to point B. But what about a point like C, where uh, individual B is better off, they're on a much higher uh, indifference curve, and individual A is substantially worse off. Can we rank an outcome like that? Well, it turns out using the compensation criterion, we can make such a ranking. So you can think about B uh, relative to uh, point B. Point E uh, has individual B's utility is unchanged. But point C um, is substantially better and the, the how much better can be measured in terms of Q1 and Q2 as that green arrow there. Let's think about how much worse uh, individual A is. Well individual A is indifferent between points B and D and then their welfare is uh, has gone down, and that could be measured in um, terms of Q1 and QT by that red arrow. So clearly measured in terms of goods, Q1 and Q2, uh, the gain to B is greater than the losses to A. So what this means is that potentially uh, point C is uh, an improvement over uh, point um, B. That's potentially, but if compensation is not paid, all right, if we leave uh, the point, um, the economy at point C, then even though potentially they both could be better off, uh, clearly the final outcome is that uh, individual B is better off and individual A is worse off. If compensation were actually paid, then we'd end up uh, not at point C, but at a point like D, in which case, um, uh, we're, we've now had a Pareto improvement. So um, that's the idea of the compensation principle that uh, if you can potentially make both people better off then you can say that that is a potential Pareto improvement and um, it uh, is favored in most welfare economic analysis.